I really wanted to make a good video about this Sun Power Solar Cell, but there's one thing that could be holding it back. What up, I'm I from Ask God Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. Let's talk about the good stuff and then we'll get into this problematic thing that I noticed about this panel. This is why you have to use your stuff so you catch stuff like this. This is a 50 watt sun power solar panel. Sun power cells are touted as some of the best cells that you can get in a solar panel. So first let's start let's talk about some numbers. This is rated at 50 watts. The voltage is 17.6 volts. The open circuit vo voltage is 21.5. I can't really explain that to you. I think that's how much power the panel produces like natively if you loop it in on itself. So you guys can correct me in the comments. But the real voltage is 17.6 and then the real amp rating is 2.8. So if you do that math, that comes out to 50 watts. That's how they get it there. I originally got this for maybe about 85 bucks. The reason why that was a good price is because there were rigid 50 watt panels that were selling for 70. The price is starting to fluctuate now. I don't know what that's about, Amazon or the sellers playing games, but be that as it may. I have plugged this into my R300 and it got about 44 watts. I'll drop some footage on that right now. Got the sun power cell out here. It's my first time testing it. It's hooked up to the GoLabs R300 and let's see how much it's getting. 37 watts. I've seen this thing go as high as 43 just playing around, nothing serious. Jason Noy made a very good point that I should pair it up maybe with a different device and see if maybe the MPPT is a problem that's drawing it down because in one of his videos he talked about or the person in the video talked about how they pull 50 watts from this. So I was kind of expecting that. I tried it on my EcoFlow but it's not a sunny day. I like that this panel is flexible or not rigid I should say because I don't know if I would call it flexible. It's not a true flexible panel. It has some flex in it. The reason why I went with a 50 watt instead of a 100 watt was one kind of cost but they balance out pretty much but every time I see a 100 watt flex panel there's this bend in it. Okay, wait, I gotta say something. I would not buy a flexible panel from anybody else. I don't know if I trust any other company. Maybe Renergy, because they seem like they would honor their warranty, but I'm not buying anything else. I'm a little sketchy. I had to make sure that it was sold by Expert Power. Sun Power does not sell these panels directly. They sell them through the Expert Power store, and then Expert Power has a store on Amazon. So if you see something else, I, I'm a little sketchy on that. You tread carefully. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. It's an affiliate link, which means I get like a percentage of it if you buy it. But yeah, tread carefully. Outside of having like a true blue, like bifold panel, I really like this device, not necessarily for its portability to like take and go somewhere, which you could. You have to be very careful with it because these panels are prone to breaking. But I do like the panel because of its ease of movability. I have a 50 watt Renergy panel. They are pretty much the same size, but this one is a lot easier to put out there. So realistically, I hope that this panel can always put out about close to 50 watts. This is the summer month, so the sun is largely overhead for the majority of the day. So I just, I like this panel. But I find myself being interested in getting a 100 watt flat panel, but that's a that's a topic for another day. I don't think I'm gonna get one. I'm eyeing that Renergy Eclipse 100 watt panel since they are of a comparable price. They're, they're costly. They're not overly, whatever. They're like $2 per watt, kind of like folding panels. I saw that Renergy on sale once, so it will forever be 169 in my mind. If it ever goes down to 159, 149, then it is sold, hands down. I thought about this when um, someone either in Lead former 73's live, or somebody talked about it in my live, like what would I do in an apartment? I thought this panel would be ideal for putting in an uh, apartment window. I'm gonna do a video about that next or in a video or so where I try to put this in the window and see how much power it gets. Now, this is not a solution for that, but people in apartments are gonna have a hard time if they lose power. And I just tried to think about something. So I wanted to test that out. That's another reason why I got this panel. But I love that this panel is so small. I can put it out in my yard very easily. I can bring it back in very easily. You can wipe it down very easily. That's another point. The flexible panels compared to the folding panels, all of the folding panels that I've seen outside of yeah, all of them. I, I, you know, I don't go around looking for folding panels. Y'all know I'm not that guy. But they have this material on it that 
you can get dirty very easily. I like that these panels, they're plastic, just wipe them down. One interesting thing about this is because I have that Renogy panel, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I can put them together in parallel. So that's pretty cool. At the front of my house, I can have two small panels that equal out to about 100 watts. I also like the idea, if I'm gonna be uh, honest with you, I like the idea of having two of these and putting these in parallel. I don't think you can put these in series on any small power station that you will probably plug these into. If you got a big beastie power station, then you're not gonna put two of these in series. That's just, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So I like that I could put two of these because they don't have that flex in them like the, or the sag in them that the 100 watt flexible panels do. So this panel, man, it, it's pretty cool. I like the price. The price is kind of flexible fluctuating. Um, I'm not a fan of spending more than a dollar per watt hour, but I made an exception because it serves a purpose. I was intrigued about it and I can see how well it works in the window for you guys. So let's get to this flaw. I, I'm kind of bugged out by this y'all because it's not the biggest deal, but most people when they get into solar, they don't have what they would need to actually use this panel. This panel, you can see that normal MC4 connector, but this one, you see these little holes right here? These things guard you from being able to disconnect the panel. So if you bought this panel and you didn't know this, I didn't know this. I plugged it up and I went to disconnect it. Per Jason Noyd's advice to use something with a better MPPT controller, and I noticed that I can't get to it. Luckily, I have the Renogy tool and I could disconnect it, but like, why would they do this? This is a problem. I'm annoyed by this because if you don't have those tools, what are you gonna do to get this out of here? It's pretty much impossible. I don't even think you could get needle nose pliers in here. Jason Noy, if you're watching, how do you, does yours look like this or did I just get a weird version of it? I need to know. Help me out. This is. Cool.